It's always during a war that we not only witness countries being pushed to the edges of innovation, but also see the most remarkable and simultaneously dangerous arms in full display. One example of such a weapon is the nuclear submarine, a beast that has the power to strike terror in the hearts of pretty much anyone. In general, submarines are pretty helpful because they're not just used in war, but also have multiple civilian uses. These include marine science, salvage, exploration, and facility inspection. In modified forms, they're efficient in performing super-specialized functions like search and rescue missions or undersea cable repair. When you take it one step further and integrate a conventional submarine with nuclear power, it results in one of the most feared vehicles in the history of war. What are nuclear submarines? By definition, a nuclear submarine is a submarine powered by a nuclear reactor. Needless to say, it has significant performance advantages, which is why it is such a popular war resource for multiple countries. Nuclear propulsion is entirely independent of air, thereby freeing the submarine from the need to surface frequently, as was the case with a conventional submarine. These submarines are able to operate at such impressive speeds for extended periods thanks to the large amount of power generated by the nuclear reactor. Nuclear submarines of the fourth generation are particularly remarkable and stand out, especially when compared to their third generation counterparts. If you're wondering why militaries would swear by them, let's explore some of their features in detail and compare them to previous generations. 3rd Generation vs. 4th Generation The nuclear submarines of the 3rd generation were primarily characterized by the increased depth of dive and reduced noise levels. Some of the prominent examples include Projects 945, 685, 949, 979, and the unique strategic missile carriers of Project 941. However, the most outstanding feature of the third generation submarines was a qualitative leap in providing acoustic stealth, an aspect that most conventional submarines really seem to struggle with. The first ships of this generation were American boats of the Los Angeles type, SSN-688. The main one entered service in 1976 while the last of these 62s did so in 1996. Third generation submarines are also distinguished by potent hydroacoustic armament and 12 outboard UVP, which makes the submarine multi-purpose. Contrarily, the fourth generation subs go at par with the most modern foreign analogs. When we say the nuclear submarines are to be watched out for by the enemy, that includes the fourth generation monstrous submarines in particular. At present, Russia is building submarines of this generation, including projects 885 and 955. These fourth generation ships of the Sea Wolf type were created at the end of the Cold War and have the shape of a rotating body with a relative elongation of about 9 due to the transition to a larger diameter durable hull. The submarine Virginia stands out from the rest thanks to its extension of about 11. These incredible vehicles are often referred to as the backbone of the Russian Navy's strategic nuclear deterrent, and for a good reason. The Barai Class of Submarines The Barai Class nuclear-powered submarines are quite a sight to witness if you're into grand displays of powerful military equipment. This class is a Russian fourth-generation missile submarine intended to replace the aging Delta III and Typhoon-class submarines eventually. Since the Soviet era, it is the first class of submarines developed by Russia, so you can imagine the extent of planning and hard work that went into its development. The project began in 1996, and over the years, the vehicle was redesigned to accommodate the new submarine-launched ballistic missile Bulava in place of the abandoned R-39UTTH Bark missile. So as of the present, there are four different submarines commissioned under this project. These include Yuri Dolgoruki, Alexander Nevsky, Vladimir Monomalk, and Kinaz Vladimir. Rubin Marine Equipment Design Bureau designed these vessels, and the concept was materialized by Northern Machine Building Enterprise. Yuri Dolgoruki, the first in the class, was built with a total cost of $713 million, including a research and development expenditure of $280 million. Even though this ship was laid down in 1996, it wasn't launched until February 2008. 
It began its sea trials in June of 2009 and was formally inducted into the Russian Navy in 2013. The Russian Kazan Another stunning nuclear-powered cruise missile that the Russian military has in store is the K-561 Kazan. It's a Yasin-class submarine and is the second boat of the project under which it was built, separated from the first by 16 years. Russia accepted this super-quiet, missile-packed submarine into service recently. And even though it's been a long wait, this new subclass would help revitalize the Russian Navy's nuclear-powered submarine force. Construction work on the submarine started back in 2009 and, after a significant delay, it was finally launched in 2017. It wasn't until 2021, though, when the Russian Navy decided to commission this fantastic vessel. Compared to its predecessor, the Severodvinsk, the K-561 Kazan is smaller, with its overall length reduced by up to around 40 feet. As a result, the previous sizable flank-mounted sonar array is deleted from the forward end. Similar to the Severodvinsk, the new design also utilizes a single hull construction, akin to Western techniques, and a break from the Soviet tradition of double hull building. H.I. Sutton, an expert on submarine warfare, commentates that the reduced side of this vehicle is intended to cut down on the development costs. However, don't make the mistake of thinking the newer boats are any less capable than the original ones. The general improvements in technology ensure that functionality is optimal at all times. Importance of Submarines In this day and age, modern warfare is almost unheard of without the use of advanced military equipment, among which submarines stands at the forefront. Thanks to its multi-role platform, it can efficiently conduct both overt and covert operations. Even during peacetime, it's super helpful for keeping track of enemy territories. It can act as an effective deterrent as well as for surveillance operations and information gathering. However, it's interesting to note that submarine warfare is not new. In fact, it traces back 500 years, at least to Leonardo da Vinci's sketches. The first recorded sub-attack dates back to 1776, during the American Revolutionary War. Even the U.S. involvement in World War I can be credited to submarines in a way because a German U-boat sinking of the RMS Lusitania was a factor dragging the U.S. there. For a while, submarine warfare subsided after the Cold War, but subs are very much back in fashion. After all, countries are seeking strategic advantages over rivals, and only a few replacements for this iconic vehicle are just as ruthless and efficient. The reason why submarines are still one of the primary military weapons varies for different countries. Take Europe, for instance. It has Cold War déjà vu, with Sweden, Finland, and the UK scrambling to find suspected hostile submarines off their shores recently. Moreover, like strategies and tactics in chess, improvements in submarine technology give rise to advances in sub-hunting. The U.S. Navy has introduced Boeing's new P-8 Poseidon jet to replace the aging P-3 Orion. France is on its way to upgrade 15 of its Atlantic II sub-hunting planes. Even China is expanding its inventory of anti-sub planes with enhanced equipment, with multiple countries investing time and resources into the development of sub-technology it's natural for the rivals to stay on their toes and not underestimate or dismiss just how crucial submarines are. Another critical factor to note is that non-nuclear subs are hard to detect, so their rise is most likely going to trigger greater investments in sub-hunting. Submarine service, is it for you? As incredible as they might be, submarines can be tricky to handle, and unless you're a trained professional with the right skill set and a determined headspace, this is definitely not the domain for you. In fact, the submarine service is an entire branch of a navy responsible for operating submarines, so you can tell how invested countries and their militaries are in their well-being. Different navies have their unique units of such services. To name a few, we have the Royal Navy Submarine Service UK, People's Liberation Army Navy Submarine Force China, Argentine Submarine Force, and the Submarine Force of France. As a submariner, you'll be expected to live and work in an extraordinary and covert environment. The primary quality you'd need is teamwork. So if you're one of those people who prefer working alone, this isn't the area for you. 
you'd be a part of a closely knit community, and people's lives would literally depend on your ability to work as a group. You'd also have to be a bit of a perfectionist because working safely with extra attention to detail is going to be expected of you at all times. So you need to understand what you're signing up for thoroughly and still wish to serve your country in this manner before even considering taking this up as a life path. Submarine service is definitely not everyone's cup of tea, but that's why it's all the more important. Alright, comment below if you think submarine life is for you. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to Insane Reality, and we'll see you in the next one.